Now I'm going to just teach you how to create a single property squeeze page. Well, I am going to first look for a listing. Now to answer the question, when you're thinking about promoting somebody else's listing, think about first of all, do you have your own listing to promote? If not, then think about another agent in my same brokerage. Could I promote their listing? Probably. You should. A lot of brokers um, will say that their opinion is that you should ask permission before promoting somebody's listing. I mean, if they're in your same brokerage, who owns that listing? The broker owns yeah, the, the broker. Yeah. Absolutely. You should be able to promote any listing in your own agency, I think. But ultimately, it comes down to this. What are your state laws? What, like, I'm in Michigan. I know what my Michigan advertising state laws are. Why do I know that? Well, I looked it up. I went to my Michigan Association of Realtors and looked up what is the law for advertising other people's listings. And in Michigan, I can promote any other agent's listing, any other brokerage's listing that I want to. I just have to say in the post or the ad or in the promotion, I have to list who is the listing broker. That is what my rule is. That is what my state law is. Again, you have a lot of people with their opinions. Oh, well, I think you should get um, the other agent's permission or I think this. Well, that's wonderful. But I just am telling you, just know what your laws are. Okay, and you decide how to run your own business after that. <laughs> All right. All right. So now we're going to look at a, what listings to promote. And so let's see, I'm going to do this one, let's say. Um, I'm going to click on it. And then you want to make sure it's not pending. <laughs> okay, it's not. It would show whether it was pending right here or not. And it's, this is the back end of KD Core and me being able to look at the listings available in my MLS from KD Core. So I can see where it is, what the MLS ID is, the basic info about it, and a little description of it if the agent provided that. So that, that's the listing. It's a condo, it's well-priced, and it's in a good location. And so this is the one I'm gonna decide that I'm going to promote. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click on the direct link on my website just so I can see the information about the property. Okay, oh, there's an open house, neat. Okay, open house coming up on Saturday. Um, it's near a golf course, so the, it, there's a master on Main. Okay, so I can just look at a little information about it. Okay, he's three minutes from a golf course, neat. All right, six minutes to the bay, 10 minutes from downtown. Um, there's, ooh, an indoor heated exercise pool, a lovely um, private garden. Automated awning, I love it. Bamboo flooring, lovely. Okay, so, so I just look at the information about the property and then I decide if I want to promote it and just know about it. It's two bedrooms, two baths, wonderful. Okay, so this is the listing I'm gonna promote and I'm gonna grab the MLS ID, okay? And now that I have the MLS ID, I am going to create a squeeze page. Are you ready? So I'm gonna go here to lead engine and under lead engine, you'll see IDX squeeze page, and I'm gonna select my domain. So if you have more than one domain, you choose, you go to your drop down menu and choose the domain you're working with. Right now I'm working in this one, and I'm gonna click on start building. You'll see I have multi-property squeeze pages, single property squeeze page options, seller squeeze, squeeze page, and market report. I'm gonna choose single property. I'm just going to paste my listing ID like so. There it is, there it is. Next, I'm going to decide on my source. Where am I gonna be posting this? I'm gonna be posting this on my Facebook business page. And so I'm gonna put in the code of FB. Oops, FB. Now, I wanna be consistent with that. I wanna do capital F, capital B every time, or I wanna spell out Facebook every time. I just wanna pick one way and then do it that way all the time. Because when I go into my business analytics, I don't want to see, see three different ways that I chose my source. Let's see, I got this much business from FB, this much business from Facebook, oh, and this much business from, you know, FB lowercase. You know, pick one way that you're always going to call or identify that source.
So FB is what I always use. And now you can do hashtags. So one hashtag I like to do is always the address of the property. And so I just do something like this. So it's 1159 Hemingway Lane. Like so. If you wanted to use the listing ID instead because your brain works that way, great. But whatever you float your boat. And I just now created that hashtag for the first time ever. I never created it before, I just now created it. You'll notice when I created it, I did not use the hashtag symbol first. I just typed it and boom, it's green, it's a button, there it is, there's my hashtag. When I, this lead comes in, that hashtag will be associated with it. Now, we talked earlier about another type of hashtag that could trigger a campaign. And next week, we're gonna be talking about triggering campaigns with hashtags when we talk about our Facebook buyer campaign. That's next week, my Facebook buyer campaign and triggering that custom campaign. But I'm gonna go ahead and do it right now, just as your intro. I'm gonna put my little hashtag Facebook buyer and what's gonna happen when that hashtag comes in and gets assigned to the lead, my Facebook buyer campaign, which is a custom campaign, is gonna get triggered and it's gonna run instead of my regular buyer campaign. Okay, and those of you that purchased my setup, you have the same thing, it's already there. If you put in Facebook buyer into any squeeze page or landing page link you do and you want that Facebook buyer campaign to run, it's directed towards buyer leads who come from Facebook, <laughs> that campaign will run. Okay, the listing ID is already there. This is important, property views allowed before registration. If you leave it on the default, that means if somebody comes to your website and looks at a couple of pictures and they read the description and then they're done, the lead will never be registered. They'll never be asked to register and you're likely not gonna get the lead. And a lot of people do this and they say, oh, I only got a couple leads or I didn't get any leads. And I'll say, what did you put it on as far as how many property views are allowed? Did you leave it on the default or did you put it on immediate of one? And there's like, oh, I left it on the default. Well. That's probably why. If you want to get leads, then you're going to put immediate. And that's just all there is to it, okay? Just do that, all right? And then we're going to generate the link. Now you'll see there's two different links here. One's, one's a long link, it says direct link, and one's a short link. These are the same exact links, but let's talk about the differences. You'll see in this longer link, it has what domain, is associated with this squeeze page. It has what MLS ID is associated with the squeeze page. PPC equals FB. That's referring to what source you used. ADDHT equals 1159 Hemingway. That is in reference to what hashtags you used. And then it says view timing equals one. That is in reference to how many properties pictures somebody can view before they're asked to register. Well, it's on immediate, okay? So it's telling the story of the squeeze page. Now, watch when I take this short link. I'm gonna copy this short link. I'm gonna paste it into the URL window at the top. And notice what happens. You will notice it converted to the long link. It's the same exact link converted to that long link. Notice here, this long link is different than the first one I shared. This link here is not the squeeze page. It doesn't have any rules. Will it register somebody on your website? Will it force a lead? Well, somebody's gonna be able to look at a few pictures and they're going to be able to look at the, the description without ever having to register. So maybe you'd get a lead, maybe you wouldn't. And if you did get a lead, um, it's not give, it's not, this, this link is not telling KB Core what to do. So no hashtags will come in with it. No custom campaign will start. It'll just come in, right? Whereas the squeeze page here that we created tells KB Core what to do. It gives it rules. It gives it instructions. So that's what the squeeze page is for, okay? So now that we have that, Let's first save it. Let's have a reference for it, okay? So I'm gonna go in here into my little lead gen template thing. I'm gonna actually get rid of 
all these examples here. I'm gonna start with a clean slate. And I'm gonna save my own links. So what's today's date? Today's date is March 22. And what type of squeeze page are we creating? Well, there's a little drop down here. I'm gonna create, a, we created a single property squeeze page. What is this description? Well, it's 1159 Hemingway Lane in Traverse City. And what is the source? Well, I made the source be FB. What's the hashtag? Well, I created the two hashtags, 1159 Hemingway Lane, and I also gave it Facebook buyer. Where do you post? Anywhere in Facebook. And what is the short link or text code? There's the short link. Now I just saved it. Now I have a reference. So if I ever want to go back here to see what the heck I did, there it is. Okay. <laughs>